I apologise for the lack of presentation as well, because that's crashed. I'm going proper old school. Um, <laughs> I'm going to persevere with this as well. Okay, I'm Lee Hayward. I'm procurement business partner. Um, I look after Wales, Bristol, Birmingham, and a few other places that I can't remember. Plymouth, Southwest. I'll do. Um, I'll start off with just a bit of background about how we were before. So I'll read it from the back. Casualty, Sarah Jane, Torchwood, Doctor Who, Baker Boys, Pobble, upstairs, downstairs. So they were, all of these things, um, programs that we made were all filmed in different locations. Um, we had Casualty down in Bristol, we had um, upstairs, downstairs at the time was in Clan Haran. Um, Pobble was in Clanduff Studios, Sarah Jane, Doctor Who and Torchwood were up in Tree Forest. Um, they all worked completely independently of each other as well. I mean, each one done his own deals for all of his purchasing. Um, it crewed its own productions. There was no talking at all between any of the, um, the, the productions. So back in 2011, I think the decision was made, probably made before that, but to put them all in one place. Um, what we, we thought we were doing with that is, um, obviously, there are so many benefits, obvious benefits, um, increasing your buying power, um, sharing the resources, sharing the facilities, um, simplified workflows and reduced traffic to site. What, what that actually means um, to us was, was single things like we'd share the props. That's never been done before. So if there's an ambulance in casualty, which there are quite a few, and we need an ambulance on Doctor Who, you just borrow one. Um, the guy who makes all the prosthetics um, for casualty, um, and they're quite gruesome as well, some of the bodies there. They obviously will be sharing that with, with, with Doctor Who as well. Um, but we also then took the opportunity to simplify the workflows, and what that basically means is we told, we told all the productions we wanted them to work in the same way, um, which wasn't exactly a popular uh, decision. Um, but we knew if they were all using the same camera, for example, and they all use the same storage media, then the post-production would be the same. And the deals we could do would obviously benefit from that. The staff is another one. Well, well because they're using the same camera, there's no training required. People can move from Pobble to Casualty to Doctor Who freely. Um, simple things like one FM provider, um, one security firm, um, and obviously the sustainability aspect as well. We, we, if we're only using one supplier to provide all our cameras and all our lighting, we're not having three big Arctics coming down the, the M4. We've just got one coming in with all um, everybody's we's kit on. Um, the, the biggest challenge is, is exactly what it says there. This is how it's always been done. Um, the resistance to change from the program makers was, was quite were quite big. Um, I don't know if anybody has any um, experience of working with TV or film, but people who make TV and film don't generally like to take advice from somebody like me. Um, so I don't wear a suit when I'm in work either. That's the other thing. Dress down. Gets me through the door. Um, we, we had to convince them, basic, basically, that the savings we were, we were doing were not going to be detrimental to the creative process. Um, and it was a, a catchphrase we were using in procurement at the time was uh, to be a partner, not a policeman. Um, it, it, was, it was very much that. I mean, in the early days um, of Rothlock being built, um, and Rothlock being built was not like other sites we've had. When we did Salford, um, basically we went out to the, co um, the constructor, constructors, developers, and said, we want, we want to finish building. Um, and they delivered us a building fully fitted out with studios and everything. We didn't do that in Rothlock. Um, whether it was wise or unwise, I'm still not convinced. But we just had the shell, and then everything we did ourselves. So the procurements we did on, on the building were everything from um, smoking shelters to lighting rigs, um, right the way through to furniture for the building, to carpeting, um, the cameras, uh, basically everything. Um, so, so for that time, 
I was basing myself in Roth Lock because we didn't have a goods in, goods out department. We didn't have security at the time. So I had a load of different hats that I'd put on, um, help carry the bins around and th simple things like that. But they may sound trivial, but I think it was things like that that actually cemented the position with the productions to, to realize that, you know, I'm not just somebody who's going to turn up and tell them they need to spend less money. I wanted to be to help them to, to create a place so they could work. Um, the, the big things that come out of it, of course, were, were the savings. Um, just by putting those productions together, and it's such a simple thing to do, just, just to say, all use the same camera, we'll all use the same supplier to give it to you. Um, I've got some of the savings here. Um, s s some of them were obviously more, more dramatic than others, but the three and a half million pound we saved on the camera hire. Um, on a three-year deal. Um, so that was straight back into their production budgets. So as, as dramas will say, that's money on screen. Um, we made some lesser savings, but still significant, like £76,000 on cam buying cameras, uh, £516,000 on hiring lighting, um, a million on catering, um, 100000 on sets and lots. But that, that was all just from the simple things, nothing spectacular, nothing very creative, just working as a single unit. Um, coming on to the, the effect we've had, um, it's difficult for us to fully put the whole effect on paper because the way that we are structured, like many big organisations, is we, we look after procurement, we, we deal with external companies and we kind of blink at ourselves then to the freelance market um, and, and to other, other benefits. But if we look at it as a whole, I think we're putting about a five million pound a year um, just from drama, just from the Bay with Wales based suppliers and roughly three and a half million pound on top of that with the freelancers. Um, the freelance market is really important to us. Um, a lot of the, the props you'll see are scattered around. I, I know our friends there have created a few of them um, and the rest of them are done by our internal uh, freelance team. Our, you know, carpenters or art departments. The Daleks are made by our internal um, people, so freelancers who come in and work for us day in, day out. Um, some of the other big areas, and I know I said to Kath I'd, I'd try and glamorise the, the creative industries, but the big money are, are simple things like taxis, hotels, I mean, they, they're the ones we've got a massive impact on in Cardiff, but, but there's a graphics um, industry in Cardiff which is growing really quickly as well. Um, re really excited about that, I'm meeting them quite often to, to, to develop that. Um, props, um, we're buying them all as much as possible, we buy them locally. Um, flats, all the, the talent will be renting their flats out in, in Cardiff Bay. We buy a load of timber to make our sets here. Um, and then there's the catering, that's a massive contract for um, a supplier to do all the catering at the studios, plus they do all the location catering. So they're the ones who go out onto all the film sets, feed all the crew. We've got one company that does that for all of the productions and they're, they're a Bridgend based company. So that was a really, really big contract and we were really happy with that. Um, the cameras, it, there's, there was three things that we thought were a big impact. One of them was when we give work to um, local companies. So that was a brilliant thing and that was our number one priority. Number two then was, was suppliers we knew were missing from the marketplace. We wanted to try and say, yeah, okay, we'll deal with you, but we would prefer you to be within Wales and employing local people if possible. So um, two of the biggest contracts we had were for camera hire and for facilities vehicles. They're the ones that the trucks, um, that the, the, the actors get changed in and you know, make up rooms. Um, one of them was from Birmingham and one of them was from Bristol, but they both moved into Cardiff and set up bases locally and are employing local people. So that was the second priority. The third one was developing the, uh, the marketplace then and, and the skill sets of, of Cardiff to meet our, uh, our needs. Um, and, and that one's ongoing. I think we've had an apprentice scheme. One of the girls in, in the video uh, touched on it. We've had that running for three years now. I think we took on... I think it was 15 the first year, 10 the second year, 12 this year. Um, it's not a lot of people, but it's, you know, it's, it's something that we, we hadn't done before. 
and it was across areas that, that there was a skill shortage. Um, and that was things like TV makeup. Um, we got people in art departments. Uh, we got cameramen. We, we're developing ga um, uh, skills for people that, 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 that they didn't have in the area and people were coming in for. So that was very important for us. So those three big things um, were, were, were the priority of, of the project, really. Um, I was on to the last slide I had, actually, which was the indirect benefits. And, and I, I mean, I was staggered by this myself when I looked at it, but I think they've estimated, and I've written it down because I can believe it, that the um, Doctor Who experience is estimated at being worth up to £68 million to the Welsh economy over its five-year tenancy. Um, that's massive to me, but, but also we've got all the independents that we commission, um, Sherlock being the biggest um, and best, in my opinion. But there's also Merlin, Atlantis, um, being human, and recently Hinterland, um, all commissioned by BBC Wales and all filmed in Wales. Um, that's going forward. We've got, an, we've got another couple in the pipeline of, of, of indies and in-house productions, again, will all be filmed in Wales. So I think it's brilliant news for us. And I, I will finish with the, the positive note that, that I'm hopeful for anyway, is with the news of Pinewood um, moving down to, to Cardiff as well. I think it's going to, I really believe it'll tip the balance on, on some of those areas where we had suppliers that wanted to move to Wales or wanted to set up in Wales or, or, or industries that needed to start in Wales but the BBC wasn't enough for them and, and I really believe, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be Star Wars as filmed down, down in Cardiff anyway, I, I just think the two combined will be enough to start up some, some other industries and move some other companies into Wales so hopefully it's, it's looking quite rosy over the next few years. Any questions? Yeah. As, um, are you aware of any of your suppliers um, within business with people like Da Vinci's demons who come into them here as a result of that, you know, in terms of them making Wales as their location as a result of the work that you guys have done and, and developed in the market? Yeah. Are you, are you aware of any of the figures around that? Yeah, well, I haven't got the figures with me, um, but Da Vinci's demons is a perfect example. I mean, you look at Da Vinci, you can look at Stella those kind of programs, they're, they're all the same suppliers, they're the same people. It's the same crowd of people, whether it's freelancers, suppliers, and they move around, um, which is good. I mean, because it's, that's mainly the suppliers that have moved to Wales or have started up in Wales, and the freelancers who are based here. What I'd like to think will come from that, I, I don't know if it has yet, but, but certainly, Da Vinci is a perfect example for the graphics. That's the, the area I'm really, really hopeful for in Cardiff is that, is that special effects graphic area. Um, I think at the moment, things like Da Vinci, Doctor Who are still a little bit nervous that the local market are, are good enough, big enough to do that kind of thing. But as I say, I have regular meetings with some of the graphic suppliers around here and I think they are getting there. Um, they're doing a lot of work for the rest of the BBC up in Llandaff. It's just that drama thing is, is a difficult one to, to crack, but, but that's why we have the apprenticeships as well. Thank you. Uh, Simon, your first city in County Swansea. Hi. Yeah. Congratulations on your £68 million spend in Wales and BBC. Just a quick uh, question. Are you subjected to the uh, full EU uh, procedures? Yeah, it's, it's something Kath and I were, were, were talking about. It's, it's the constant challenge for us. Um, there's, there's, and on top of that as well, we've got Ofcom um, who, who say that we have to spend so much in, in a region. So we've got Ofcom telling us one thing and EU um, telling us another. Yeah, um, it's something we always try to find ways around to be creative. I mean, we've got, we've got meetings. <laughs> yeah. we, we've got meetings set up with, um, with the Welsh Government, actually, to ask them how they've got around certain... Get around, I shut watch my mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Sorry to our Albanian friends. Or whatever. Um, yeah, we we want to we want to we want to if we can do regional lots, we try to do that, and um, we we tend to put frameworks in place wherever we can um, for the whole of the BBC rather than um, uh, BBC Wales or BBC uh, BBC Scotland. But as my colleagues at the back know, we 
we are constantly pecking away at the people who create those frameworks for us to look for opportunities of put, splitting into regional lots where possible. But yeah, it's the biggest challenge I think we all got. They all want to look at the props, that's all. They only want, they only want to me for the Dalek. Yeah. Just, just one, one thing that Frida and I went down to um, the, the studios <coughs> to talk to me um, in advance of this. And one of the things that I think was a surprise was the impact that it has had on, on the hospitality industry in the area. And how big is that to them? How important is it to them? What the hospitality has in? How, how, yeah, how big, how big an impact has it had on the hospitality industry? With, with the BBC. What do you mean by the hospitality industry? The sorry. Restaurants, hotels. Oh, you'll be oh, just in, yeah. in the bay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, it's one of those things that we can't measure, but the fact that sort of every, every restaurant in the bay has discount for BBC staff kind of sends a message. And I, I was out there last night, I stayed here last night, and I walked over to the, to the bay, and, and pretty much in every restaurant I went, I recognised somebody mm -hmm. from, from the studios. Yeah. So yeah, why we can't measure yeah. the impact on it, we can see it, yeah. and, the, and the, the, a lot of the people who've moved down here with, um, with some of the bigger productions, like Casualty, have all bought in this area as well, so they're, they're all, yeah, and they frequent the bars quite a bit, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, can I just ask a question in terms of your skills needs and future skills needs? Has anybody done any work with you there, West Government or whatever? Yeah, we work with... Yeah, we work closely with Kavla and Skillset. Um, again, that's not my particular area. We've got, but but I work closely with with the boy who does look after that um, with the apprentice scheme. But they they constantly um, there's it's communication all the time about and the websites are up and and I think it's Kavla that actually run the schemes for us and we just you know we 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 host the apprenticeships. But yeah, we work with quite a few external bodies on that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Brian Weber, retired local government, oh, yeah. but a lifelong fascination with the BBC. All right. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad. Do I, need, do I need to sit down? I was intrigued and a little puzzled by the concept of the BBC hiring cameras, hmm. rather like the hospital hires <coughs> beds. Um, yeah. uh, to what extent do you hire what really, to me, should be stock in house equipment it's again it was something i was i was i was telling telling kath about it's it's very much dependent on the type of thing we film in the cameras we've bought are for pobble and i've really got to watch i'm not dismissive of pobble in any way here but the type of program that the pobble is is a fast turnaround not cutting edge program where so we can use the same camera. We buy a good camera, a good HD camera, a good tapeless HD camera that we know is going to last for 15 years. Um, and, and same with the lighting. Um, we buy the lighting in for Pobble. Um, we know it's going to be there uh, for, for the foreseeable future. The difference comes with programs like Doctor Who um, are a perfect example Upstairs Downstairs, which is on, on my film. I loved Upstairs Downstairs. But after two series, it was, it was got rid of. Now, what the important thing to those type of dramas is, is they are using the best camera they can for the budget they have. So they are more likely to, to want the newest camera on the market. That camera choice may change in two years when our technology people have been over to IBC in Switzerland, Amsterdam, thank you, seen the new cameras, they'll come back and that's the new look that they want for that series. Now, that's not something that really happens anywhere outside of those top-end dramas. So for the rest of Clandaff and for Pobble, it's absolutely by your cameras. It's only those kind of ones. The, the other thing with those is because they're cutting edge, the maintenance on those is extremely expensive. Um, so while we have an in-house team who can maintain the, the cameras that Pobble use, we rely heavily on, on the, the skill set of the other people who supply them to us for the maintenance of those, those type of cameras. The lighting is another one. They're constantly changing with, with low energy lighting. So the fact that if we went out and bought it, we would probably be outdated by the end of the series. <laughs>